Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? I am super excited for this video because it's another day of Indie Miss and I thought we could go ahead and do a little bit of commentary on indie brands that I have fallen in and out of love with in the year of 2020. So this video is all in good fun. I have nothing against any of the brands that are in the falling out of love category. I still like them. I will probably still buy from them. I just don't have the enamored feeling about them that I used to. I just feel like I'm always keeping track of new indie releases between the series I do here on YouTube and my Instagram account, Indie Makeup Spotlight. So I think it's nice to just take a breath, look back at all the releases and kind of see like what it is that is or isn't making me love a brand. So jumping right on in, I think I'm just going to go back and forth between the in and the out of loves just to balance out the positivity and the negativity. So the first brand that I have fallen in love with in the year of 2020, um, I think you guys are not going to be surprised at all. I have to say Cine Grace they were the top brand like when I was thinking about this that I have fallen in love with. It's really funny because they were low-key in the friend zone. <laughs> I have bought a bunch of single shadows from them. I've bought highlighters and blushes and just I've bought so many things from them over the last few years. I think I tried them for the first time in like the middle of 2018 or something like that. So I've known about them and I've used their products for quite a while and I think that the reason why this year was different is because my makeup style has changed a little bit because I've been enjoying looks that are colorful but also softer at the same time and I feel like that works really really well for Cindy Grace. I just feel like they were being neglected in my collection and when I genuinely started using their shadows every single day I was just like I cannot get enough of these like they are so good they blend so well they don't crease on me they don't fade on me they don't have a ton of fallout normally the sh metallic shades are just like thick butter on your eyelids <laughs> i don't know if that even sounds appealing but it is so i just feel like their quality is above and beyond and in the past like they would have releases and i would be curious about them I would like them, but I feel like it's just, it's a different level now. Like I was like, yeah, yeah, you're cool. And now I'm like, you're one of my favorite brands. The first brand that I feel like I've fallen out of love with, and it pains me to say it, I have to say Juvia's Place. I feel like I loved Juvia's Place for so long. I had every single palette they made, and I just felt like they did such colorful, fun store some colorful fun stories, fun color stories. The quality was really good, especially for the price. And I don't know, I just, I've loved Juvia's Place for a really long time, ever since I got the Masquerade palette. Oh gosh, I wanna say I got that in the mid to end of 2016, cause I remember using that when I was pregnant with my son. So I've been loving their brand for a long time and buying pretty much every eyeshadow palette release. I feel like the reason this year is different is for one, they started using pressed glitters in their palettes and I personally don't like pressed glitters at all. I know it's divisive. I know a lot of people like it. I'll say it real quick. I don't want to get too repetitive, but every time I say I don't like pressed glitters, I get questions why, but for me, it's personally the fact that they are not eye safe and I have very sensitive eyes about like injuries. Like they freak me out really bad. I've had eye surgery twice when I was younger to correct issues. I wear contacts, very strong contacts, pretty strong glasses. I don't like that risk for me personally. So when I see a palette that has pressed glitter, I know that I'm not gonna use it and I just don't wanna buy it. Like I just don't even wanna see the pressed glitter in there. And it's not like I'm upset thinking that my opinion matters more than other people. It's just that I'm not going to buy it is kind of where I'm at. Another reason I haven't been loving their releases as much is because they started doing like gigantic palettes and doing square pans and then like just completely changing like I feel like I can look at their palettes now and not even realize that they're a Juvia's Place palette because they're just changing it so much and for some reason I know it's not that big of a deal but I just don't understand it. So I could throw in that I had a customer service experience with them recently that was pretty lackluster and the customer service rep, when I asked more questions, they literally just ignored me. I did like the whole um, like 
review how this was. I gave it like a one star and said that I didn't get the help that I needed and I never got a response from that either. And I just noticed that I haven't been buying their releases this year, which leads me to something really quickly before we go on to the next brand. I purchased two of their palettes right when they launched and I did not realize they had pressed glitters in them. So my loss is gonna be two of y'all's gain. I have the Nubian Royal gift set here, which has a palette and two lip products in it. And then I have the Nubian Glow, which also has a palette and two lip products. I wanna say this one's more corally and this one's more purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these away. Same rules as all my other giveaways for Indie Miss. I'm gonna contact the winner December 26th. Please be subscribed to my channel, that would be cool. <laughs> these aren't too heavy, so I'll do them international. Anyone can enter. Just comment down below if you want purple or orange, and I'm gonna do two winners just to spread the love a little bit more, so purple or orange. Move on to the next brand that I have fallen in love with this year, and I decided to go ahead and say Sigil Inspired. I've only tried two of their products, but I talked about them recently in my indie brands on my Radar for 2021 video and just how enamored that I am with them. So I felt like that was a sign that they belonged on this list. So I have two of their little six pan palettes here and they are just such good quality, so cute, perfect little color stories. And a few of you let me know that they apparently are sneak peeking like five other palettes or something that are six shades each right now. So definitely feel like I'm gonna end up buying some of them because there was one that had like a bunch of pops of blue and a pop of red. It wasn't like actual pictures. It was like a digital drawing, not the actual palette, but I just feel like these are super special. I do think it's cool that it's a Russian indie brand just because I love it getting to try makeup from all around the world and I just love the quality. So I don't know, I can't explain it all that much. They're a brand that I'm definitely loving and I cannot wait to see what they do next year. My bank account's not ready, but I am. Okay, so the next brand that I have fallen out of love with, I hate even saying it, but it's the truth. It's just how I'm feeling. I still feel like there's room for improvement. I'm still like cheering them on, wishing them the best, hoping for their success. It's just that I'm not enamored and I don't have the inclination to buy their products anywhere near as much as I used to. So that's gonna be Luxy Beauty. They were actually, the like one of, gosh, they're not the exact first indie brand, but one of the first indie brands I ever tried, especially like doing handmade shadows. I remember having a really great customer service experience with them and just thinking like, wow, like this is so cool. I love that it's a one woman show. I love that it's a small business. Like it was just kind of the first like stepping stone into my love of indie. So I feel like they'll always have a special place in my heart for that reason. But there's two reasons why I've fallen out of love with their brand. The one that's most important is that I feel like there was a, a quality change in the shadows. I know that they were originally handmade and then I believe that they ended up with a manufacturer and the shadow prices are incredibly low. Like I cannot fault them with that. Like they are super affordable shadows. For me, I almost never have an issue with shadows not lasting on my lids because I have very dry eyelids. And I've had some shimmers from them where when I wear them without a glitter primer, they just poof away. Like they're just, they, it's, I don't even understand it. I don't even know how to describe it. They literally just like melt off my eyes and they're gone in an hour. And I had that issue with their multi-chromes. I really thought it was just the multi-chromes. I thought it was that specific collection that they just weren't formulated that well. I'm sorry, but they were just really, really bad when it came to wear time. And yes, they were more affordable, but if they don't last at all, then it's not worth it. Even with a glitter primer, those were terrible. But then I got their butterfly collection recently. And if you use a glitter primer, it's very pretty. But if you don't, again, they just come off the eyes so fast and they just, I just, I don't like them and I don't even have oily eyelids so I can't even imagine the monstrosity of a mess that they would be on oily lids and I kind of mentioned this 
in a video a while back and I got some feedback that a lot of y'all had issues with their shadows not lasting either. I never had that issue in the past when I bought their shadows originally. So that's just super disappointing and they had a new collection recently. The shades look really pretty but I just don't want to buy them because I just I don't believe in the quality anymore because they don't last on my eyes. The other thing that I've noticed too with Luxy is that they really don't post on their Instagram anymore unless they have a new collection. It's like there's an announcement, there's swatch pictures, and then they're gone. It's like no reposting other customer swatches or looks or anything. It's just like ghosting and then they're back. They'll post one picture of an announcement and then swatches and then gone. <laughs> For me, when I see a brand page, I really love to see it on different people, on different skin tones, just getting to see the products actually in action. And they have a pretty large following. If you look through their tagged photos, there's so many beautiful pictures. I just feel like it's slightly a missed opportunity. Again, I just feel like I have to repeat that I don't have hate for any of these brands. I really wish them nothing but the best. I just kind of wanted to share how I'm feeling and I'd be curious to hear if there's any brands that you've fallen in love with or out of love with this year because I just think it's an interesting topic and I just really, really hope that it doesn't get misconstrued in any way. I'm not here to like add any drama or anything like that. I just want to talk about makeup. The last brand that I wanted to mention that I've fallen in love with this year and it's kind of starting like the end of 2019 as well is Lunar Beauty. I just feel like their products are so beautiful. I know it's an influencer brand so it might not have the same exact feeling as other small brands but I just feel like they've captured my heart with their attention to detail, their packaging. Like I just I can see all of the hard work that gets put into it. It's not just like let's put out another nude collection or let's do this or this like standard packaging or like I can see so much thought behind it, which is one of my favorite things about indie brands in general, even if it's not handmade, seeing that it was made with love and that someone put their passion and their heart into it. It's not just like, I like makeup, let's make money kind of thing. <laughs> If that makes sense. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with making money, but I love that it seems to be so much more than that. Just from my humble perspective over here. So I just, I love the quality of their products. I'm wearing the Moonspell palette right now. And I just think they're so fun. They're one of those brands that when I use their product, when I look at them, when I hold them in my hand, I'm like, this brings me joy. And then the last brand that I want to, men want to mention for falling out of love with, I don't, I, I don't think this is going to be that much of a surprise if you stay up to date consistently with my indie makeup releases. Every time I talk about this brand, I'm like, ah, this isn't for me. And it, it used to be that everything they did, I loved. So that's going to be Natasha Denona. I guess the reason why is because there's just been so many releases that missed the mark with me. I want to say the last new release that I got, oh, wait, was the Love Palette this year? Oh man, 2020 feels like the longest and the shortest year ever. The Love Palette I did like, but then there was the Glam Palette, which is pretty, but I hated the names. I can't get past the names on that one. There's the Trio Chrome Palette, which was pretty, but I just couldn't justify paying that price for only three multi-chromes. I think if it had been half and half, I could have justified it, but I just, I didn't feel like I needed it. It was kind of swamp. Oh man, I bought their multi-chrome the, I have one in front of me because I wore it the other day as liner. The Chromium Liquid Shadows. Okay, I did buy this. But I was off put about the brand saying that this was the first eye safe multi-chrome when that's definitely not true. The smaller indie brands have been doing it for so long. And then also after I wore them, I just felt like they weren't worth the price. I felt like I would have rather just stuck to the multi-chromes I already had from small brands. It's kind of hard to explain quickly. I have a full review video, which I can leave in the cards right here for you to check out in case you're curious to hear all my thoughts on those. Oh yeah, there was the bronze palette too. I mean, if you absolutely love warm neutrals, it's pretty, but again, it just didn't call to me. So overall, that would be the main difference. It was just like so many things that I loved and now, it's just easy to pass on most of her releases. 
And Natasha Nona is one of the brands that I mentioned in a video that I did originally that was like makeup brands I'm crushing on, but I'm not crushing anymore is basically where I'm at. So I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your opinions down below and I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I was about to say the next one, but it's tomorrow this month. So, okay. Bye. <laughs>